At halftime, that's the score. Seattle 14, Chicago 6. Three scores came in the last one minute, 22 seconds of the half. Let's take a look at the uh, first half figures, and Seattle dominates them as expected. Well, I think what, what is indicative is 15 first downs to seven, and really 14 points are not as indicative as the offense for the Seahawks were in control of the whole first half. And I think it's the reason that a Walter Payton only gains 40 or 35 yards in the first half. He's only carried the ball about six times. He isn't really able to set up anything they can effectively take advantage of. Bob Avellini, when he did start throwing the ball, was very effective. However, they didn't throw it in situations that lead to a passer's uh, effectiveness. You know, they're throwing it on third and six, third and eight. That's not the time you can be effective and sustain a drive. I think Seattle's lack of offense has hurt them as far as ball control is concerned uh, throughout the first half. They're going to have to do something, put it up and get these people excited. John, last Sunday we saw Denver really put a defense on Jim Zorn. They had a controlled pass rush. They, they wouldn't let him go up the middle. They contained him from his sweeps outside, and he, they held him to 9 out of 29. I think his poorest day as a pro. He has bounced right back. Today, though, he's had 9 out of 12 in the first half for 137 yards. Well, you know what I like about Zorn is last year, last week, the coach kind of gave him an out. His hand was hurting, his shoulder was a little bit sore. After the game, they said, what happened? Are you going to be all right? He said, I came out because I wasn't playing well. Now, the coach gave him a chance to say, yeah, I'll be okay. He's not that kind of, kind of a guy. To me, what makes Jim Zorn right now the top quarterback in football is at a very young age, he's taken responsibility for the group he's in charge of. He doesn't pass the buck. He comes out there, he can run. He's got all the abilities physically in the world, but he also has a good head on his shoulder. These guys buy Jim Zorn, and that's why they're scoring the points they are. Every club that we've talked to, remember earlier in the year when we talked to Pittsburgh, a week before they played Seattle, and Joe Green, Elsie Greenwood said, hey, that kid over at Seattle is trouble. He's a pest, <laughs> and he drives you nuts back there. Well, Jack Lambert and Jack Ham both said we'd rather play anybody. Well, obviously, a quarterback that runs around gives a linebacker trouble. However, he does more than that. You know, he allows their offensive coaches, Rome, Mudd, McDonald, to, to implement things in their offense that take advantage of his abilities. And boy, if I'm a Steve Largent, I know I can get down the field, and I can get open, I'm going to get hit. And I, that's why I can't say enough good about their group. Over in the Bears side, they have to rally, or they're going to lose their seventh game in a row, which would be their longest losing streak in years. They started out the season so well, winning their first three. They made the playoffs last year for the first time in 14 years, and everything really looked great for them. They, they've been in all these ball games, but they're losing them. Well, this is a big game for them, and I'm sure they recognize it at halftime. They're close enough. They're within eight points. They've got to get a break, and they can get back in the game, and it is a big game again for Chicago. All right, we'll continue our coverage here, and we'll be back with the second half kickoff right after these messages. This 1978 National Football League game is brought to you by Dodge Trucks and your Dodge dealer, who invites you to come in and see how Dodge is into trucking like America's into jeans. By Schlitz, beer makes it good. Schlitz makes it great. And by Sylvania, makers of Superset Color TV and a complete line of home entertainment products. Let a little style in your life. Add a little life to your style. Chrysler LeBaron for 1979. With Chrysler style, engineering, luxury. And options like genuine leather seating. Let a little style in your life. Surprisingly affordable, yet a Chrysler in every detail. Put a Chrysler LeBaron in your life for 79. Add a little life to your style. Let a little style in your life. Take any razor available in America. Any razor. Now there's an electric shaver that will shave as close or your money back. The Remington XLR. Remington can guarantee a close shave because only Remington has this remarkable three-part system. The first head shaves close, the second closer. The unique intercept cutter is designed to shave longer hairs. The Remington XLR. It shaves as close as a blade or your money back. International Falls, Minnesota. A car sits on a frozen lake. Through January, February, and March. Then, in April, it started thanks to a diehard. 
The Die Hard, sold only at Sears. Neil Armstrong and the Bears at the left, Jack Patera, head coach of Seattle, on the right. And I think we're going to see a new quarterback in Mike Phipps. Sometimes you can tell. A guy's either warming up or he's warming up to get in the ball game. And he is not, he has been taking some snaps from Dan Neal, and it's my guess. But coming out in the second half, they're going to go with Mike. Individually, the leading ball carrier in the game, Sherm Smith, 46 yards for Seattle. Hunter had 28, picked up some tough yardage on third down plays. Zorn had 25 yards. Peyton held at 24 yards in the first half, and Harper had 24. There's Avellini, the first team quarterback. Phipps, the backup man on the right, and maybe Phipps, because he's really cranking it up. And we can't put it on Avellini because there's a whole group of lethargic individuals, individual play, and the quarterback can be the effect of it. However, an insertion of Mike Phipps at this time, maybe something can get generated. It's really a pretty good move. Leading pass receivers, McCollum and Largent, have caught three each for Seattle. Peyton and Latta have caught two each for Chicago. Zorn was nine out of 12, first half, and Avellini six out of 15. Thomas will kick off with a wind at his back. Second half underway. Coming to, out of the end zone. Touchback, Seattle ball, first down on their 20. On first down, Seattle has averaged seven and a half yards a gain on first down. That's very important to come up second, two and a half, second and three. Boy, you can really operate then. <laughs> Chicago's averaged nearly seven yards on first down, much better than they have all year. Last uh, Sunday, both Seattle and Denver were outstanding on first down play. Quarterback is Zorn. The running backs. It'll be Sherm Smith and Tony Benjamin. There's Zorn's figures. And uh, for the year, he's gone over 2,000 yards already. Running the option play out to Sherm Smith. Smith is held it down at the 21-yard line by Mike Hartenstein, the right end of the Bears. And if you're if you're a Chicago fan, this is a very big series. You can see they come out with a little intensity. If they can stuff Seattle's offense right now, get the ball back in good field position, they can get after it. I think the crowd will get after it with them and they can go if they don't if they allow Seattle to make a, a sustained drive down the field we could fall back into the same old first half pattern bad news for Chicago Bear fans the Bears middle linebacker Tom Hicks was injured in the first half will have ligament surgery on his knee tonight will be out the rest of the year Largent a little bit high for him he's gone down curled back started for the sideline and uh, it would have taken an exceptional catch to grab that one. And right now, the wind has picked up severely. It's very difficult to throw the ball to sidelines. If you're going to throw, it's going right down the field. The wind is either dead into your face or dead with you. Right now, the wind is against Seattle, and they've got to do something to get it out of the hole throughout this quarter. And this is a big quarter for the Bears where they had that wind at the back to do something. Third down. Nine to go. Five secondary backs on the field for the Bears. Three wide receivers in for the Seahawks. The pass is complete. He was trying to hit Sam McCullum, 84. Big pressure there by Jim Osborne, the left tackle, number 68. Fourth and nine, and the Seahawks must punt against the win. Little bit of miscue uh, offensively in the line. Let Jim Osborne come free. No chance to develop the pattern. Virgil Livers is the safety man for the Bears. Herman Weaver will do the kicking. There's Livers, and he's on his 45. 25 yard average in the first half for Weaver. That win holds it up. Livers feels it right on the 45. Starts out. And is stopped just short of the 50 by Dave Brown, the cornerback. All right, let's take a timeout. The Bears fans on their feet, trying to urge the Bears on with a score, 14 to 6 Seattle. Three unidentified 19-inch color TV pictures, each the best of its brand. Over a thousand people saw them and picked the one with the best overall picture. They didn't pick America's biggest seller, Zenith. 
are the second biggest RCA. Over 60% picked the 19-inch Sylvania Superset. Over 60%. We're not the biggest, but a lot of people think we've got the best picture. The Sylvania Superset. For over 30 years, people have been buying Poland chainsaws. Wouldn't use anything but a Poland. Poland, Ed. Poland. And for over 30 years, they've been mispronouncing our name. Poland. Po. A uh, poo. So we'd like to remind you that our name is Poland. And for a tough, dependable chainsaw, Poland is the only name you need to remember, no matter how you pronounce it. Poland. Shay goes undercover to break up a baby's for sale racket. I paid fifteen hundred dollars when the girl shows up pregnant. David Cassidy, Man Undercover, Thursday on NBC. Mike Phipps in for his first play of the season has replaced Bob Abilene at quarterback. The Bears now are trying to get something moving with a new man at the throttle. Bears ball first down in their forty-nine yard line. That's Peyton. Peyton has stopped at the 49 of Seattle for a two-yard gain. All right, you can see they're, they're pumping back in the huddle the first half. They kind of drag back in there. This is the sort of adrenaline that you need, but you have to be effective when you have it. And they've got to do something. If I'm a Mike Phipps, and I don't think he's calling the plays, but if I'm a Mike Phipps, I'm going to get that ball up in the air and get somebody going. Second down eight, Bears on the Seattle 49. Harper, Peyton in the backfield. Behind the new quarterback, Mike Phipps. Phipps for his first pass of the season. And it's complete to Harper. Harper is run out of bounds, first down on the Seattle 32. The Chicago fans coming to their feet. And you can say that again. All Chicago fans finally got off sitting on their hands. They, they do care in Chicago. It's a great sports city. They've been a little fed up with the lack of offense their team has been producing. Somebody like this gets in, kind of induces a throttle to the whole group. You can see the people in the huddle. They're clapping their hands. They're saying, let's get after it, guys. Each guy has to do his job. 15-yard pass from Phipps to Roland Harper. Avellini now on the phone. Quick handoff. Harper stopped at the 30-yard line. Two-yard advance. Second down eight. Keith Butler, the rookie right linebacker, made the stop. Up front for Seattle, it's Price, Boyd, Sandiford, Gregory. Green, Beeson, and Butler, the linebacker. Webster, left corner. Brown, right corner. Beeman and Harris are the safety men. The defense has held Chicago without a touchdown so far. Second down and eight to go. Going out of the eye. Walter Payton has it. Payton at the 30, puts a move on, and a slam down on the 26. By Ernie Price, the very active left end. This looks like a layoff. However, it's a it's a specifically designed play. You send Peyton out on what looks like a delay pattern. However, he's got some guards and tackles coming out underneath him. The play actually looked better than it ended up. Revy Story coming out doing his job. John, that Price is all over the field. You bet. He's a good acquisition. They've got two of them. He and Bill Gregory are both doing a job. Third down four. 26-yard line of Seattle. Chicago in possession early in the third period. They're not going anywhere on that one. Maybe a yard or two as they try and ram it up the middle. And it appears Harper is short of a first down. If he is short, he's just about a foot short. Well, it may be close to a measurement. Well, they're going to uh, call it fourth and a foot. Seahawks are sending in some big boys. Oh, no, they're going for the field goal, Kurt. Bob Thomas comes on the field. He kicked two in the first half. He missed one. Penalties on the play gave him a second chance. He now has kicked 14 out of 15 this year. Here's the kick, and it is up, and it is good. A 40-yard field goal by Bob Thomas. Gives him 15 out of 16. Time out. We'll be back with a score now. Seattle 14, Chicago 9. We found the sock. You find the foot that fits it. We'll get him. Smell, Duke. 
Now, come on. There's something remarkable about Burlington socks. Well, he's, he's just fun in here. A special treatment called BioGuard helps control sock odor. That goes for Burlington dress socks, casual socks, sports socks. Just look for the green stripe on the toe that says they've been treated with BioGuard. The odor controller lasts for the life of the sock. I, I, I don't know what happened to you. Only Burlington makes it. Duke, where'd you go? Duke. Are we going to be the bowling champs tonight? Yeah. Having a problem? Yeah. Did I forget my press stone? Yeah. Take out the old, put in the two. Put in the press stone, press stone two. Protect against freeze ups and corrosion. Take out old, weak antifreeze and put in America's most trusted antifreeze, press stone two. Take out the old, put in the two. Put in the press stone, press stone two. And when you flush your cooling system, use press stone super flush. The game-breaking plays, the hottest new craze, all pros in action, the latest in fashion, straight-talking views and late-breaking news, the pregame show that has it all, NFL 78. This man had the chance to break Lou Groza's all-time percentage record for successful field goals. He now has 94% success this year. We'll talk about it in a minute. Crawford with the ball out to the 15, trying to get that blocking 20, and is uh, taken down on his 28 by Mike Spivey. Lou Groza in 1953 kicked 23 out of 26, 88 and a half percent. Thomas this year now has kicked 15 out of 16, 94 percent success. He's hit three today, three out of three today. All right, Seattle did not move the ball last time. They have it on their own 28-yard line with a first down. Running out of the I formation. Aaron Smith. Smith, the leading ball carrier in the game, is brought down on his 32-yard line by Mike Hartenstein. Smith has 50 yards and 14 carries. Doesn't look like he's doing much. Three, four, five yards at a clip out there. You can see the offense for Chicago is trying to get with it. They've got their offensive coach down on the ground, all the men huddling around him. There are a few things they can exploit, and they're doing it on the ground. Here's Al Hunter. Hunter on a cutback. He has a first down, just short of his 40-yard line. Uh, Jerry Muckenstern and Gary Campbell. Uh, uh, two linebackers pinching there. Okay, their tendencies are pretty clear. When Hunter's in the ball game, there's a good chance he's going to carry the ball. Benjamin will do the blocking. Sherman Smith has done both. Excellent block at the point of attack by Sherman Smith. Hunter cuts behind him, and they pick up a first. They're just short of the 40, so it passes to the 40-yard line on official NFL statistic keeping. Play action pass. the fourth sack for Chicago in the game. Seattle has recorded one dump on the quarterback. And the other three sacks were clearly good defensive line play. That one I think you have to credit to the secondary. He had plenty of time to throw it. The men were all well covered. That's one of the few times today that all of his people have been covered. There's the man that came in, moved the Bears in the field goal range, Mike Phipps. Second down, 13. Osborne and Page were the two defensive players who sacked quarterback Jim Zorn. Second and 13. Hand off to Smith. Smith breaks it. Still going. Ooh. Boy, that is a great play where Zorn is starting back as if to pass. Smith holds deep and then takes it and looks for his own. All right, how does it happen? Number one, they have to contain Zorn when he rolls out. When they do so, you can see Hartenstein going to the outside. He leaves the hole, hands the ball off to Smith. He's made most of his yardage today on a, on a little delayed sprint draw. And he now, John, has 70 yards rushing in this game. That was a 20-yard carry for him. Seattle on the Chicago 43, first down. 14 to 9, Seattle ahead. 8.34 to go in the third period. Zorn will put it up. It is off the hand. It was broken up by Fensick. Ray, Ray was Gage. a little bit concerned and went for Gage. Gage 
got on uh, Rabel before the ball got to him. However, it was touched by Fensick before Gaines made his move. So it, it was very clearly not interference. A good decision by the umpire not to call interference. Fensick touches it. Gaines lets uh, Rabel know he's around. Rabel doesn't like it too much, but it's still second and ten. Second down as the Seahawks go into set position. There he is. He just skipped out of bounds. Sam McCollum. McCollum's out on the 31-yard line of Seattle. Winford Gaines, the left cornerback from Cincinnati, drove him out. First-year player. Picked up as a free agent from the Pittsburgh club. And he had tough luck with Pittsburgh in 76, 77. He was on the injured reserve list both years. Gaines has played pretty well for him, Kurt. Right now, good cornerbacks are going to give the receivers a little bit to the outside because it's a very difficult throw in this win. Zorn made a perfect one that time. Sam McCollum, ex of Montana State, is caught for Bozeman, Montana. Fake. As he got behind the defender, he still had to stay in bounds. And to do so, he was really walk, walking the old tightrope and see if we can catch it. Now, this is what Zorn creates. He fakes that sprint draw, keeps the pass rush off him. As he throws the ball to Largent, let's take a look at the way he keeps himself in bounds. That's what you call a top-notch receiver. Well, that's two for him today. Zorn to Largent, Steve Largent, University of Tulsa. One of 26 yards, the other of 31 yards. Herrera's kick, Zorn holding, and the kick is up and good. And every time you score on uh, Seattle, Zorn quickly brings them right back. So, we'll take a timeout. It is Seattle 21, Chicago 9. From Miami to Oakland, they're coming to play. Beer makes it hey, anybody good. need a Schlitz? Yeah. There's no debate. Here we go. All right. Beer makes it good. <laughs> Schlitz makes it great. 11 million times a day, America reaches for a Schlitz. Sorry, I'm late. Cheers. This might be the best game we ever missed. When you're out of Schlitz, you're out of beer. Schlitz makes it great. 40 years ago, these four-wheel drive Dodge trucks helped America do a really tough job. This year, the Dodge four-wheel drive power wagons will do more tough jobs than ever with standard full-time four-wheel drive that costs extra on Ford and Chevy. And the W150 has the lowest price of any short wheelbase four-wheel drive pickup built in America. Dodge power wagons doing America's toughest jobs for more than 40 years. Dodge is into trucking like America's into jeans. Hey, that's my Dodge. That's the third drive in the game for Seattle, over 70 yards. That was seventh play, capped off by the pack. What they're doing in this game is trading touchdowns for field goals. Three to three, but you don't get the same points. Kicking off will be Herrera. Zorn has now completed 11 out of 17 for 179 yards, and he passed very little in the first period. Bashnagel is now the deep man, number 84, replacing Gaines as the kickoff returner. Art Best, John Skabinski there. John's father, Joe, used to play in the National Football League. It's a squibbler rolling around. Ash Nagel scoops it up on his 16. Oh, is he up in there? And he was hit there by number 56 of the Seahawks, Sammy Green, the linebacker. Hey, you see a guy coming on down there. Sammy Green is a, was a second draft choice originally for him. He still plays a lot of linebacker. When you have a man that can break up a wedge, get a piece of the ball here, you've got yourself some. The Bears ball under 36. Remember, they have the wind at their back this period. In the fourth quarter, they'll be going against the wind. Zorn's touchdown passes have both been against the wind. The larger. That's the same to affect him. Mike Phipps throws it out right there. Twisting away is Scott. 
And Scott is out of bounds at a first down on the 38 yard line of Seattle. Golden Richards really helped the pattern. We haven't seen an awful lot of him today. We know he's an outstanding receiver. He cleared out for Scott. Scott caught the ball. Was amazed that there weren't more people around him. Made a pretty good move. Got to the outside. And they're back on the move. That's three for three for Phipps. Here we go. Scott's coming inside. But all the traffic has been cleared out by Golden. Scott and Richards line up on the far side in a slot. Avellini on the phone. He's been benched in the second half. Peyton. Peyton, that power sweep has not been as effective for him this year as last year. He's a marked man every time he touches that ball. And those quarterbacks are coming up and forcing him hard. He's been a marked man since he's been here, but it hasn't stopped him much. Let's take a look at this score. The Steelers have rallied on a Bradshaw to Swan touchdown and a Gerilla field goal. 13 to 7, Pittsburgh leading New Orleans late in the third quarter. And Philadelphia added a field goal to their lead against Green Bay. And in the third quarter, with six minutes left, it's 10 to 3, Philly. That's again to the outside. First down. Roland Harper on a neat move. Almost a basketball pivot after he got it. It seems to be so easy when they decide to go on first down upstairs, but you wonder why they ever stop. Again, they're effective. Good run after he gets the ball. Roland Harper's a man that can do an awful lot with it. He can help your offense in a number of ways. Chicago's on the move. They don't want to settle for any field goal this trip. We have a Seattle man down. Mike Phipps. Four out of four. First time he's appeared in a game this year. We'll be right back with a score. Seattle 21, Chicago 9. Now try and forget one of America's largest life insurance companies, Lincoln National Life. We're easy to remember. Wherever you may roam, you'll find us near your home. Oh, hi, it's me again, hosting and tasting more posters. This time it's for the first annual Delco battery sale. AC Delco is making it possible for you to buy a Freedom battery at a special sale price. Thanks, Delco. Wherever you see this poster, look for it in, uh, look for it in your neighborhood for a great price on a battery you can trust. Thanks, Delco. Well, you'll be saying thanks, Delco, too. Hi, I'm Coach Sam Rotigliano of the Cleveland Browns. And I hope you'll do it in the American way on Election Day. Go to the polls Tuesday and vote for the candidate of your choice. Preceding message brought to you the public service by the National Football League and NBC. Sandiford was injured, the starting right tackle, Steve Niehoff. From Notre Dame in his third year, the first player drafted by the Seahawks has gone in at right tackle. Uh, he came in against Denver and was outstanding last Sunday, especially on the pass rush. All right, the Bears are moving. They're on the Seattle 26 yard line with a first down. Mike Phipps has completed four for four as he started here in the second half. There he is, that is Richards, and it is intercepted by 22, Dave Brown, the right cornerback of Michigan. It looked as if Dave Brown was in the, in the Chicago Bear huddle. They played a little double zone. As Golden Richard went, went down the field, he broke out. He didn't quite get far enough behind Brown. The pattern was predetermined. Phipps did not think Brown would be in the area. He was. He came up with the ball, and that's a big turnover for Seattle. That's the first turnover for the Bears in the game. Seattle's had only one. Brown kept both those feet in bounds before he went out. The Seahawks ball on their five yard line with a first down. They're ahead 21 to 9. 645 remaining in the third period. I think they're coming. There's Smith. He's held to a yard gain. 
That was Dan Reeves, of course, that play. Don Reeves, the middle linebacker, playing in place of Tom Hicks, who we're sorry to report injured his knee in the first half, the starting middle linebacker, and will be operated on for knee ligament injury tonight. The Sperry NFL reports will be following this game, time permitting. Second down, nine. Definitely be on. Sandifer has a back room. We don't know whether he's back or not. That's Al Hunter fighting and clawing his way to the 11 yard line. Jim Osborne, aided by Gary Fensick. Now they have a third and four. They just want to get out of here and get some breathing room. Maybe get a first down and try and keep something moving. No, no maybe about it, Kurt. They know they would like to get one and need one. They're going against the wind. They don't want to give the ball up. That wind is getting stronger. It's really blowing now. The flag on the goal post across the way. Look at them. They've, their conversions on third down has been outstanding. If they don't get it that time, they'll have to punch. Mike Hartenstein. And number 68, Jim Osborne. Hartenstein forced to play in, and then Osborne took him. But the wind, uh, there's a flag across the far corner from us, right along the Seattle end zone that shows you how that wind is blowing up a little bit more. You can really see it. There it is, that's the flagpole. <laughs> Up, up, well, we got up. the pole. <laughs> and no win. There it is. Kick. Livers fumbles the ball. Big scramble for it. It appears the Bears recovered. The Bears do recover it. Virgil Livers handling that low kick against the win. A 26 yard boot. Okay, he was very anxious. It's a low punt. He knows if he gets it, he can really put him in good field position. Got started a little before he caught the ball. Had to run up the back of Spivey's legs, and Spivey's lucky he got out without getting hurt. Horace Ivory has scored another touchdown for New England, running five yards. He ran for 19 in the first half, and New England leads Buffalo 14 to three. New England has won six in a row. There's ball, Seattle 38. Quick hitch pattern. Good. He stopped on the 30 yard line. I thought he might break that one for a long way. Brown nipped him from behind because he had a streak right down. You the had good goal. reason to believe it. The flow of the play, which was very well conceived, little fake running play on first down. When he came back outside, he had nothing but to get by Brown. Brown got rid of a blocker and made a good play. We're approaching four minutes remaining in the third period. Seattle leading 21-9. Second down two for the Bears on the Seattle 30-yard line. Walter Payton. Well, he needs some opposition there at the 29-yard line. How about those Cardinals, John? Well, St. Louis seems to have come alive. They're now putting it to the Giants 20-3 in the third quarter. And here's another score. New Orleans is rallying. Tony Galbraith ran five yards for a score early in the fourth period. New Orleans 14, Pittsburgh 13. That's the third good team they're uh, they're having to go at. I think if New Orleans wins, that'll be more wins than they've ever had in one season. They're down a yard to go. Well, they're jammed up, aren't they, in that line of scrimmage? Harper is the first down. More. And it was Cornell Webster, the left cornerback, who stopped him. That's a good play at the point of attack. Both Reeve Sori and Dennis Lick. Dennis Lick just runs Ernie Price all the way down the line of scrimmage, creating a real big hole for Harper. He takes advantage of it. Chicago keeps the ball. Bears on the 22 yard line. That's their first third down conversion in the game. Seattle 22, Seattle ahead 21 to 9. 
Lips is tossed. Just broken up by Dave Brown, intended for James Scott. Hey, you leave Dave Brown out there. No wonder too many people don't try to pick on him. He looks like a shadow. Second down, 10. Oakland has scored eight minutes to play in the first quarter. They lead Kansas City 7-0. Stabler to Raymond Chester for four yards. Oakland, Denver's leading this division. Six wins, three losses. Oakland has won five and lost four. Seattle has won four and lost five. Tightly bunched in the Western Division of the American Conference. Harper dragged down by 77. Bill Gregory to right in. Hey, it's, it's a tough trick when you when you try to call a draw play and you've got a safety blitz called against you. That time they had every hole plugged up. Didn't have enough blockers to make the play effective. That safety man was on the move just before the snap. Tips five out of seven in the third period. Third down, nine to go. Avellini wide open. Touchdown, Chicago. Harper's in. The Bears score. And that's what you call Pitts knows it's a blitz. They came again. They're trying to get to the quarterback. He's been having it his way when they don't send extra people. They gambled. Pitts picked it up. Hit Harper. And Seattle lost. And Chicago's back in the ball game. 21 yard touchdown pass. Pitts to Harper. Harper has scored his seventh touchdown of the season. Nicky doesn't want to get in there pretty bad. Oh. -ho. Thomas for the extra point. Good. He's got one going now. One minute, 38 seconds to play in the third quarter. The Bears have just scored their first touchdown of the game. They've done it with the win containing Seattle in their own territory, taking advantage of field position, and they just marched in 38 yards after a short Seattle punt. Well, I see your old boys aren't doing too well today. Well, they've got Steve Bartkowski back, and he seems to be coming on pretty well. He's leading Atlanta. They're having a real good year trying to get their sixth win. He leads San Francisco in the third quarter, 14 to 3. <laughs> 21 to 16. Score at the half, 14 to 6 in favor of Seattle. Crawford and Hunter are back deep. Bob Thomas will boot it. The uh, breeze, which I think must be around 15, 20 miles an hour now. You can bet with any break, this baby's going deep in the end zone. Weiss is blowing the ball off the tee. Might get in there without him kicking it. Even though the uh, Seahawks have scored this quarter, that win will be a definite advantage to them in the fourth quarter. Somebody get better get over there. They could send somebody up to hold it. Goal posts are waving in the wind. Look at them. I'm amazed that uh, that both quarterbacks have thrown the ball as effectively as they have in this win. Now they boot it. Crawford coming up the sideline. 20, 25 to his 27. Rufus Crawford, the rookie. Remember, next Sunday, NFL 78, a half hour before the game in your area, 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Denver's at Cleveland. Houston's at New England, Miami's at Buffalo, and the Jets are at Philadelphia. At 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Baltimore at Seattle, Kansas City at San Diego. Consult your local listings for the game and time in your area. Seattle's ball on their 27 with a first down. Large in motion. Jerem Smith turns the corner. Right up, hey, look at this. He's still in bounds. He's going to be taken and pushed 
out of bounds. And he was in bounds all the way. He did not step out of bounds. Liver saved the touchdown. Okay, we've been, that's that's amazing when you can come back after a team that's playing at home gets back in the game. But let's watch Tom Lynch. Here he pulls, number 61. This is the way backs are sprung. He goes up, he takes the right man. If he hadn't gotten Buffon, that play is nothing but a four-yard game. He gets Buffon, takes out all the angles, the pursuit can't catch him, and Virgil Livers has to come over from the clear on the other side of the field to finally push, push Smith out of bounds. A 67-yard run. Watch him on the sideline. This is remarkable footwork by this back that really has impressed us. Look at him there. He stayed right in bounds, comes on up, and he can move it. He can get you yardage inside or outside. First down, goal to go. They're on the six-yard line of the Bears. Largest in motion. Lawrence Stanley. Mayo throw. And it's so good. Don Rees batted it down. Soren <laughs> started to take the hole, and he knew that was going to be a collision course. There was really no nowhere for him to get down and hide because it was going to be sayonara for his act. So he just threw it into the group. He had a receiver, but I think more, in, more intention was put on getting that ball away and get back to the line of scrimmage second and six. What a day Sherm Smith was at. 18 carries for 141 yards. Second down, six to go for a Seattle touchdown. They're leading 21-16. There goes Smith. And is he over or not? No signals up. He is. Over there. there it goes. They just popped it up. Touchdown for Sherm Smith. That's only appropriate. He just he just got through running the longest run from scrimmage any Seattle Seahawk has ever made. He polishes it off with on second and six with a six-yard touchdown run. Good block by John Yarno. They give him some room. August is helping. Newton pushes people out of there and they score six. This young Seattle team is remarkable if you look at it again. Every time the Bears have scored, Seattle bounces right back and takes it for long marches, sometimes grinding, other times in just a few plays. Explosive. The kick by Herrera. Kick is good. And they score again with a minute three to go in the third period. Chuck Foreman had just run. There's the score. 48-16. And uh, Chuck Foreman had just run a yard for a touchdown. Minnesota leading the Lions 17 to 7. The Vikings looked like they were on their way down in those standings, and they've really bounced back, John, the last three weeks. Well, and give credit to Fran Tarkington. He has come back. There aren't many guys at 38 years old that can still do the things he can still do. There's Tom Hicks, who knows that he has to undergo surgery tonight. These knee uh, conditions, the sooner you get to them, the better. They like to operate now just as quickly as they can. He'll have knee ligament surgery tonight here in Chicago. He's not too happy. We can't blame him. And we send him best of luck and hope he has a complete recovery and he'll be back next year with the Bears in that middle linebacking spot. When we get that kind of a break, it's always an if. And it's, it's a football player's Bad dream. Herrera will kick off. And he's booting against the wind. Let's go down to the other end of the field. You'll see how this wind is blowing. Bashnagel is on the 10 yard line, about the eight now. Normally he'd be back at the goal line. He just figures Herrera will be 10 yards short with this kickoff. At least. And Seattle has that wind with a lead in the fourth period. Wibbler. It's taken by uh, John Skabinski, number 30, rookie. He made a good play to get to that ball because that was an excellent kick by Herrera. He can do a lot with that football kicking off. They do a lot of tricky things. They gave themselves a chance to recover that kickoff. Skabinski made a top play. Bears have scored two of the three times they've had the ball in the third quarter, led by their new quarterback, Mike Phipps. Field goal by Thomas, touchdown pass to Harper. And then uh, they had another drive going, and Dave Brown picked off a Mike Phipps pass. 
Zip tosses it to Walter Payton at the 40. Payton at the 45. Goes down just short of the 50, but he had the first down. Ernie Price was the man that nailed him. A very well conceived play, a little play action pass. They like to run the ball wide on the switch. He fakes the ball to Payton. However, the flow is coming away to the right side. He looks to the left. Payton just slips in behind the linebacker who's left. They pick up a good gain in the first down. Ash Nagel's in as a wide receiver. Scott is out. 18 seconds. Phipps to the sideline. Fleet at the 44-yard line of Seattle to uh, Greg Latta, 88, the tight end, and he was wrapped up by Autry Beeman, the strong safety, who leads Seattle in interceptions this year, number 27 with four. And there is the gun ending the third quarter. And now Seattle will take over a strong wind at her back with a score, 28-16, Seattle. Dawn Lodge, Sea of Japan. The Navy. See a recruiter or call toll free. It's not just a job, it's an adventure. From South Carolina to North Dakota, they know what makes a state fair a great fair. Beer makes it good. It's just one schlitz. There's no debate. Nothing else comes near. Beer makes it good. When you're out of schlitz. Schlitz makes it great. You're out of beer. Nobody makes it like Schlitz. Every drop chill lagered for quality. 11 million times a day, America reaches for a Schlitz. Because since 1849, Schlitz makes it great. So when it comes to beer, why make it good? Schlitz makes it like no other good. Schlitz makes it great. Many things go into the making of an Olympic champion. It takes natural talent, hours and hours of practice, and a burning desire to be the best. But there's one other element that can't be overlooked, money. The cost of preparing a team for the Olympics is staggering, and we need your help. Because America doesn't send athletes to the Olympics, Americans do. Send your contribution to U.S. Olympic Committee, Box 1980C, Cathedral Station, Boston. For $25 or more, you'll receive this Olympic medallion. This message furnished by the U.S. Olympic Committee and NBC. Going into the fourth quarter, those are the staffs unofficially for the first three periods. This is Kurt Gowdy and John Brody. It's 28-16, Seattle. The Bears have the ball. Second down and uh, a long two to go on the 43-yard, 44-yard line of the Seahawks. What a lunge that was. It's pretty hard to make those three-yard gains on lunges, but it was all stacked up in the middle of the pack. Walter Payton does what he's done so often, jumps all the way over the stack, picks up a first down, and Chicago's still on the move. Take a look at Bill Gregor. He kind of, he's got a slip block, block on him. Third ball, first down, Seattle 40. Coming up fast that time was Cornell Webster, and he had only one idea to intercept the ball. It was intended for James Scott. He timed it just right. Cleveland, first quarter, leading Houston 7 0. Brian Seip ran two yards for the score, the quarterback. It's going to be very difficult to throw against the wind, however, they have no choice. Second down, 10. That one popped out of the hands of the 35-yard line. Walter Payton, who'd uh, run down, curled back, and then was going to wait for it and make his move. Well, he had to put a little zip on it to get it in there. There were three defenders covering very well uh, Payton's move. Phipps did put it in there. Payton will usually come up with that ball. Third down and 10. We had uh, 24 points scored in the third quarter. You might say it was a bit active. And we do.
just opened the fourth quarter here at Soldier Field, Chicago. Third and ten for the Bears. Deep sideline, way over the head of Golden Richards, 83. Now the Bears have a fourth and ten. We're going to take a look as uh, Ted Nathanson, our producer, George Finkel, another producer down there. These boys are giving us a wide angle. You can see Phipps had to get rid of the ball. There was nowhere he could throw it. This wasn't a pass that he was trying to hit a receiver. He was throwing it out of the ballpark. You can see why. They were covered. Parsons to punt. Crawford is deep. He's trying to hang it up there. Fair catch. Crawford goes down in his 16-yard line. That's where the uh, Seahawks will take it over. Maybe they'll move it up a yard or two. All right, we'll be back. Here's a timeout. And the score, Seattle 28, Chicago 16. Owens Corning built this glass house so you can see all the places insulation can save money. New home or old? Your attic. In severe climates, you may need insulating power up to R38, a foot of pink Owens Corning fiberglass. Another place to insulate, floors over unheated garages or crawl spaces, and walls exposed to cold or heat. Want to know about insulation? Ask the experts. Ask Owens Corning. Think of all the stereo receivers out there, all the sophisticated electronics, all the heavy price tags. Not one of these receivers has all the features found in JCPenney's remarkable MCS Series 75-watt receiver. Features like a graphic equalizer with LED readouts, an FM multipath deviation meter, an LED signal strength meter. JCPenney's MCS Series 75-watt receiver. Think of it. Nobody offers Super Saver discount fares to so much of this land as United. United built the largest airline in the free world around you. Oh, Disco John, huh? Isn't he cute? That's Rocky. 17-yard <laughs> line of Seattle, their ball. First down, they have a strong wind now behind them. And a little over 14 minutes to play. Those are Gorn Trigger's outstanding day for the third-year quarterback. And he's in trouble. And he is tackled at the half-yard line. No safety. What they ruled, Kurt, is that his attempt, he kind of gave up at the half-yard line, tried to stay. They carried his momentum into the end zone. It was a very good call. They had a blitz on Bruce Heron, the left linebacker. Alan Page. Page has been great today getting to the passer. Well, Page has been great a lot of days. And when, that's his fourth, getting to the passer. This time he gets a he gets a good deal of help from Raves who gets in there quick. You see Zorn trying to stand up, but he's got no case. It's on the one-yard line. That's five sacks for the Bears today. That was Bruce Heron. I said it was Reeves. Second down, 26 yards to go. Seattle trying to hold on to a 12-point lead. Gordon just throws it away that time. He was in trouble back there again with a strong pass rush. It's amazing what you can get away with. If you're alert enough to take advantage of, of the opportunities, there was a big space in the middle of the field, and Zorn was aiming for one of those strikes. Now, that looked like, you know, deliberately grounding the forward pass. That used to be the rule if there was nobody there. But the only rule now is uh, if you pass to prevent losing yardage, you intensely ground. Well, what would you say that was? <laughs> Brad Shaw to Blyer, 24 yards. Steelers lead North in 2014. A minute 51 to go in that game. Steelers have lost only one game all year. Third down. Ooh, they upset Al Hunter, and now they'll have to punt out of their end zone. That was Don Reeves that nipped him, number 57. This is where the wind, if he gets us away, 
the wind is going to play such a big factor. If he were back on the other end of the field, he'd be lucky to get off a 25, 30 yard punt. Now, if he can get one up high, he may hoist it out of here. And in punt formation is Herman Weaver. The 45 yard line, Virgil Liver. He doesn't have much room. He can't step on that back line. They go after him. He gets it out. Beautiful kick. Beauty to the 46 of the Bears. Livers has it. They're going down after him. And they nail him. Great coverage on that. They were running him backwards. He lost uh, ground as he went backwards. He lost about 10 yards. 54 yard punt. We'll be back. Bears in their own territory with the score 28 16, Seattle. It's a big, shiny machine. Dodge makes it. One of 28 pickup truck models for 1979, including roomy club cabs, even roomier crew cabs, and four-wheel drive power wagons that have an urge to play. Dodge makes pickups that help build houses and carry houses, and sometimes Dodge makes the day. Dodge is into trucking, like the bear goes into G. That's my Dodge. And that's my Dodge. From South Carolina to North Dakota, they know what makes a state fair a great fair. Beer makes it good. Beer's just one schlitz. There's no debate. Nothing else comes near. Beer makes it good. When you're out of schlitz, schlitz makes it great. You're out of beer. Eleven million times a day, America reaches for a schlitz. Every drop chill lagered for quality since 1849. Schlitz makes it like no other good. Schlitz makes it great. A young scientist travels 6,000 years into the future to save the woman he loves in an all-new version of H.G. Wells' The Time Machine, tonight on NBC. John Brody just shook his head. Yeah. Bubba Dean ran one yard for a score. Atlanta leads San Francisco 49ers 21 to 3, 8.51 to go. Right after this game, this very NFL report will have all the scores and highlights of what's happening today in the National Football League. Bears ball on their 36th first down. Phipps flares it out to Harper. Harper escapes. Out to the 40, 41. Boy, this Harper's a solid back, John. That's a tough way to pick up four or five yards. I also think, you know, he's an outstanding receiver, a top blocker. He compliments Peyton so well, and yet their offensive production is limited. They've got a fine offensive line. I'm not sure they utilize this man enough either. Got four today for 51 yards, including one for a touchdown. Tied is out. Bash Nagel was into the wide receiver. 28-16 Seattle. 12 minutes remaining. There goes Peyton. 40, 45. First down. He picked up the extra yardage with that nimble little skip step and is out on the 49-yard line of Seattle. He is one of those unique fellas that when he gets man-to-man -man on a cornerback, he gives you nothing to hit. That time, Dave Brown was in perfect position, but he was all, he was aiming at all knees and shoulders. Yards rushing have been way one sided in this game. The Bears. That will have to add them up. <laughs> I can't ask. Joe, you have them. First down. That's Peyton going to the 45 of Seattle. And he was met there by Dennis Boyd, the left tackle, 68. Good offensive surge, Kurt, by Noah Jackson and Dan Neal. They're now picking up four, five, six yards with every running play. They're mixing things up, and their offense really looks like it can do something. 84 yards rushing for the Bears, 213 for Seattle. 67 and one track by Sheriff Smith. Payton again. First down for Walter Payton to the 38 yard line of the Seattle Seahawks. Butler was a man that stopped him. When you get an offensive line pumped up, it sure makes things easier. Dennis Slick, outstanding for a long time as an offensive tackle. Number 70. In the circle, he cuts he cuts off Green, keeps it from making the tackle. Peyton picks up a first down, and they're on the move. 38-yard line. Harper, more room, and there's 
Walloping away now, five, six, seven yards of drag. Keith Butler again made the stop. Looking at Doug Long, the fellow that got injured on that on that punt play, it was good for about 64 yards. Really got Seattle out of a hole. He's a kid from Whitworth College up in Spokane. They don't miss many people up in the Northwest. They don't let them get out of the states. Second down, four. Chicago on the Seattle 32. Harper's a lone setback. He has the ball, and he's close to a first down. No fancy stuff there, was there? Godfrey, Gregory, and Boyd. Here we gonna go again, the circle. This time it's around number 65, Noah Jackson. Gets pretty good position on Terry Beeson. Moves him back off the point of attack, and they pick up about three. They've got third and a foot. They're on the 29-yard line of the Seattle Seahawks. Third down. Oh, maybe a half yard. Ladder and Cobb, two tight ends are in. Flag goes down. Flag is down on that play. And it's against Seattle. They don't have a first down. Phipps carried on the street. The clock has stopped. Nine minutes, 28 seconds to play. Jim Zorn, number 66, is Bill Sandifer, the right tackle from UCLA. It is now on the 24-yard line of Seattle. This is the time, Kurt, where if they have a good play just inside the 25-yard line and they can predict the defense that Seattle will be in, they could really employ it on first down with a play-action pass, something down the field. Bears have had only two penalties you saw today. First down. Bears trailing 28-16. Big hole, Walter Payton charges through it. And they're now taking over the charge in that scrimmage line. They're moving Seattle back. They are winning the game at the line of scrimmage. Walter Payton's get an opportunity to do the things he does best. Carry that ball past the line of scrimmage. He picks up about nine yards. And Second one on the 15, 16. The leading ball carrier in the National Conference had a slow first half, but now he has 64 yards total in the game. Sherm Smith, the leading ball carrier with 147 yards. Harper inside the 15. Roland Harper, Louisiana Tech. Fourth year player. This backfield was made in the draft of 75. Peyton, Harper, Grafton, Latta, Greg Latta, most of these players forming the nucleus of the Bears. A lot of good people, and they're threatening to uh, put the highest point production on the board that they've had all year. Bears ball on the Seahawk 14-yard line with a first down. Eight and a half minutes to play. 28 to 16 in favor of Seattle. Three bare field goals at a touchdown. Seattle has scored four touchdowns. Two passes by Zorn the largest. The cutback by Harper, and again they surge forward. For another nice pickup. Ernie Price on the stop. No need to put the ball in the air. Uh, Taking a look at it when your offensive line is doing the job that they're doing to the Seahawks. You see Terry Beeson cannot get into the game. Dan Neal has him out of the play. He finally makes the stop about eight yards deep. And that's not where the middle linebacker is supposed to be. There's still a lot of time to go, but this drive of the Bears is using up time also as they stay on the ground. Pitch, Payton, Payton, forward, Walter Payton goes over. And they have broken a 20-point 20, 20 mark for the first time this year. Seven yards for Walter Payton. The Bears are right back in at 7.33 to play. What a grinding drive that was. You really have to win at the line of scrimmage to make a drive without throwing a forward pass for 64 yards and a touchdown. That's some kind of drive. Ten plays, John. 
Look at Peyton. Seventy-one yards for Walter, and they go astray. Now that leaves them with twenty-two points. Got messed up on the extra point. Pass Dangle. They can still win it if they hold Seattle scoreless with a touchdown and an extra point. So with a timeout, the score is Seattle 28, Chicago 22. Want to drop your car off fast? Nobody does it better. Hertz leads the others by far. Use Hertz Express Car Return. You'll find it everywhere. And at busier airports, Hertz people can meet you right at your car to help you return it even faster. I don't have to go to the counter? Just catch your plane. So rent a Fairmont, LTD, or other fine car fast from Hertz. Hertz is a superstar. Zonk, if you want a date, get in shape. Shape? I'm solid steel. Uh-uh. Chic -uh. shape, Zonk. Chic shape. Get clean, get close, get comfort too. Get your face in chic shape. Click in Chic Super 2, the only twin blades Teflon coated for incredibly comfortable close shaves. Great shape, Zonk. That's chic shape. That's Super 2. Next Sunday, exciting regional coverage of the best of the NFL. Telecasts include the Broncos versus the Browns and the Oilers against the Patriots. Check local listings for the game in your area. NBC Sports. 28-22. Here's an attempt at the extra point. However, you know it wasn't a fake kick. The ball was centered so high that Fashnagel had no chance to get it back down in time. And there's always an option where you say, hey, if I do get up and I do have a little time, I'll throw the end man a pass. Never did get quite that much time. The kickoff by Bob Thomas. Swimming it down. Picked up on the 17 by Rufus Crawford. Crawford brings him out. Flag is down after he went out of bounds. Look at this score. Third quarter, Oakland, Kansas City, 7-3. Jenneru just kicked a field goal. Kansas City is losing, John, but they're playing everybody tough lately. They are a tough. They're a tough group. Uh, they haven't seemed to have been able to put it over the hump. This one being marked off against the Chicago Bears. Maybe a face mask. Personal foul, face mask. But it is, it's right on the 50-yard line. All right, let's watch Winford Gaines. Oh. It looks like he has him by the neck. However, when that head turns around, you know he's got the mask. Seattle trying to protect this. Gaines is the man that committed the face mask. Seattle trying to protect a six-point lead. They have the ball on the 50-yard line. 28-22 Seattle. Zorn. Everybody chasing him, throws on the run. He's got Largent open, and Largent's out of bounds for a first down on the 31-yard line. And Gary Campbell was chasing Jim Zorn from time one. Zorn just got it off in time. They've got another first down, and look at this. The final, Pittsburgh had all they could handle from New Orleans, but they did come out on top, 20 to 14. So the Steelers are nine and one for the year. Running away with their division. First down, that was a 19-yard pass. Largent has caught five for 116 yards. Anytime a receiver goes over 100 yards, that's a big day for him, just like a runner going over 100 yards. Jerem Smith, not much. He's pulled down on a 29-yard line by Jim Osborne. Smith is the leading ball carrier in this game. He has 149 yards, 67 on one pickup. Jim Osborne's been seen on a lot of tackles today. He's having an outstanding game. Second down, eight to go, 6.50 to play in the game. Seattle wants to keep moving it, pick up some first down. They'd like to take it in. Another final, the Eagles upset Green Bay 10-3, and the Chicago fans will love that one. As this Central Division is bunching up, Going out to the sideline, right on there to Largent again. 
That's quite a battery, these two youngsters, Dorn the Largent. That's a heads up receiver, Kurt. He knows that they want to run as much of the clock off as they possibly can. He catches the ball, straddles the sideline. When he does so, has enough, is enough in control of himself to say, whoops, let's see if I can't get back inside and pick up the first down. And he does so with a fine play. Six catches for Steve Largent, 42 on the year. He's averaged 17 yards a catch. Uh-oh, Buffalo. Ferguson to Chandler, 11. Buffalo challenging New England, 14 to 10, a minute 47 to play in that game. Smith hit at the 18-yard line. Number 82, Alan Page on the tackle. Mike Hartenstein was in there with him. All those scores, details coming up on this very NFL report. We've got just a little more than five and a half minutes to go, and Efren Herrera knows what his duty is. A field goal would put them more than seven ahead, and I don't think Seattle will take any unnecessary chances down here. They're in a slot left formation. Second down eight. Warren, sideline. No good. Out there, trying to grab it with Steve Label. Well, that stops the clock with 5.15 to play. Dorn. 200 yards, as we told you, Seattle leads the league in passing, 209 yards a game. They have 208 today. They're going right along at their seasonal average. Dallas is the only other club to go over 200 yards a game passing. Now McCullum has checked in, and Zorn is calling for a timeout. I think they've got four wide receivers in, and Jim just wants to get the play straight. We'll be back here. Seattle trying to hang on to this lead. The Bears trying to rally with a score 28-22 for Seattle. Here's the new Pennzoil that saves gasoline. And Kenny Stabler, quarterback of the Oakland Raiders. New Pennzoil PZL. The Pennzoil that saves gasoline. That's right. You know the Pennzoil in this can? It really does help you go farther on a gallon of gasoline. And it saves you oil changes, too. They call it Pennzoil PZL. I call it a winner. Blue Cross and Blue Shield plans present an American tragedy. Nothing is so useful as the car, but many Americans misuse it. Blue Cross and Blue Shield plans are working to hold the cost of health care down. So stay fit. Walk when you don't need to drive. Together, we can keep the cost of health care from being driven even higher. And lost by Green Bay, they're seven and three. Minnesota was five and four going into today's game. And uh, they were ahead of the Lions. They could be six and four. Tampa Bay five and five. Chicago three and six. Green Bay losing. More and more important in Chicago to rally here. Larger in motion. Third down play. Dorn jumps and throws, and he just missed his receiver, who was in the end zone and slipped and fell. That's Steve Rabel, number 83. He was there open, and he slipped and went down in his back. He had a very tough play to make, Kurt. It would have been a great catch had he made it. He crawled, actually crawled a couple steps just to get his hands on the ball. He was down when Zorn threw it. Zorn was looking everywhere for any sort of any sort of help. He sees Ferguson was covered. He comes back. Rabel almost makes a great catch. A 34-yard field goal attempt by Efren Herrera. He's hit two out of four between the 30 and 39-yard line this year. This could really help the Seahawks. It is up, and the kick is good. A very important field goal for Seattle because their lead now is nine points. There it is, a, a, a 31 to 22 lead. The way this ball game's going, however, it is still in the hat. Chicago has shown me some offense after the after about uh, 28 minutes of this ball game. These last 30 have been very exciting and well played offensively by Chicago. I think it's the sort of thing they can expect every week from these guys because they can they can solid get it and they have some people that can. 
So that makes the job more difficult for the Bears. If they could have stopped Seattle, the last time they had the ball, they swept right down the field. 64 yards with a crunching ground game and scored. Walter Payton going over. Now, as Testament, who's been injured, has a play today. Sims is out, another running back. He didn't even make the trip. And it's been heavy duty work by Sherm Smith for the Seahawks, helped by Al Hunter. Five minutes and six seconds to go. There's a the final. Minnesota now is only one game in back of Green Bay. Minnesota beating the Lions 17 to 7. The Vikings have come back. A big win against Dallas. Now that Dallas pushed him along. The high kick. Bashnagel gives way to uh, John Skabinski. He just does get down. Lewis Bullard made the uh, tackle on the kickoff for Seattle. Another final, New England hangs on, beats Buffalo 14 to 10. Seventh win in a row for the Patriots. This very NFL report will have all the details. 32 yard line of Chicago. Bears ball. And they rally. Just under five to go. If they don't, they have lost seven in a row. Their longest losing streak, I think, since 68. Fifth, nine out of 14 in the second half. Throwing against the wind. A rollout. Harper has it at the 40. First down at the 45. Out of bounds. He wanted to get out of bounds. And that's just staying alert if you're a Mike Phipps. Oh, the whole play was designed to go to the left side. Harper was just left alone. Phipps came back to him at the last possible second. He was very badly rushed. Threw the ball perfectly. Here you go. yard gain. He just kind of instinctively came off to him, saw him, and hit him. Harper can really come out of that backfield and catch the ball. He can help you. He has caught uh, three today for 46 yards. Check that. Five. Five for 69 yards. Well, Barry Phipps, 77 Bill Gregory, who had three sacks against Denver last Sunday, was in there. Down on the ground is Ernie Price. Seems to be injured. He's all right. He's up. It gets pretty active down, uh, back there by the quarterback when the defensive linemen get a good surge. Remember, NBC will have a wild card playoff game in December. Then two more playoffs deciding who plays for the championship January 7th. All be capped off by the Super Bowl on January 21st at NBC and the Rose Bowl on January 1st. Field, Chicago, as people are joining us along the network. Seattle leading Chicago 31 22. We have four minutes, 19 seconds to play. This is Kurt Gowdy and John Brody. Bob Avellini played. There's the youngster who has been brilliant again for Seattle, Jim Zorn, taking his team to 31 points today, throwing two touchdown passes. Mike Phipps came into the second half and replaced that man, Bob Avellini, who had six out of 15 in the first half. The Bears. Have a third down. Long yardage. Zip fires it out. Intercepted by Seattle. That's Cornell Webster with it. Trying to pick up a block. 45. Hit by Walter Payton, number 34. You see Sam McCollum raising his fist. Thank you, boys, for getting us the ball back. However, here's Jim Scott going underneath Keith Simpson. It's a five-man defensive backfield. He runs it. It's a, a corner, a deep corner. Cornell Webster is waiting right at the break point. As he does so, Phipps can't keep everybody in his in his vision. He picks the ball off. Good defensive play. Walter Payton finishes it off. Seattle on the Chicago. 43-yard line, a first down. There's the interception again. We're ready for action here, though. Four minutes to play. 
Ronnie Benjamin made that carry. Seattle's ball. You just joined us. It's on the Chicago 37 yard line. Seattle leading 31 22. Three minutes and 39 seconds remaining. Mike Phipps, number 15, just threw an interception. Jim Zorn has not done much wrong today. That's Sherm Smith, the leading ball carrier in the game, with around 150 yards, tackled by Alan Page, who's played a standout game, a 12-year veteran who, in 1971, became the first defensive player in the history of the NFL to be selected as the most valuable player in the league. And he was. <laughs> Having had an opportunity to play against him a few times, you just had to keep your attention on, <laughs> on that man or you were in for trouble. Three minutes to go and a nine-point lead for the Seattle Seahawks. Who, if they hold on, will be five and five on the year. They won five all last season. They're going to win some more. Al Hunter fell down before he could get going. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. You're watching the Seahawks on KING TV, Seattle. Let's take a look at Alan Page. He used to be 88, now he's 82. I don't think the number on your back means a whole lot. They know who you are. And they're trying to handle him with two people. Didn't quite work out that way. He got in on the play. Seattle led at the half, 14 to 6. Led at the third quarter, 28-16. They're leading now, 31 to 22. Two minutes, 17 seconds to go. It was a wild third quarter, 24 points scored. The Bears have had three field goals and a touchdown by Walter Payton and a touchdown by Harper in a pass. Largen has caught two touchdown passes today from Jim Zorn, and they're forming quite a battery up there in the Pacific Northwest. Two third-year players who are rapidly becoming famous around the National Football League. That's their coach, Jack Patera. We want to thank Terry Kane, by the way, and Gil Haggard for their aid up here in the booth today. Uh, Jack Patera, we were talking last night, and he said, you know, the toughest adjustment I had to make as a head coach is that on game day, I didn't know what to do on the sidelines. He said, it didn't do me any good to bring a prop out. I wasn't going to use it. He said, being an assistant, you prepare for your area so much that during the game, you never get a chance to see it from an overall view. He said, now as a head coach, I get a chance to see anything that might develop. I really don't know what area I'm going to get after, but something always comes up. You know, John, the uh, Seahawks, in their first year of operation, look like they drafted for defense. And what they've come up with is one of the best offensive teams in the National Football League. You bet when you find a guy like Zorn, you've got to find Sherman Smith and Zorn in a good offensive line, and we're going to score some points. you got to be lucky. Zorn wasn't even drafted, and now he's rapidly becoming a star. A high pass out to Sam McCullough, sailed over his head. Officially, uh, Sherman Smith today has 23 carries for 152 yards. John Brody talked about Smith before the game. We've seen him two weeks in a row now, and we're impressed with him. You've got to be if you're watching the game. The Bears hold, take over on their own 37. They have two minutes and 13 seconds to pull this one out, or they're going to lose their seventh game in a row. They send Golden Richards to the right and James Scott to the left. Funny thing in this losing streak, the Bears have been in every game. There's a draw play. Walter. Peyton doing some stuttering running. Oh! That is running. You know, this baby is far from over. I've seen a lot of, lot of teams score 10 points in two minutes. We're just getting down to the two-minute warning. They've got it in, in Seattle's territory and just takes a touchdown and a field goal. Peyton now has 89 yards. He had only 24 in the first half. Number 34. A timeout has been called by the Bears. You get a good you get a good hole at the point of attack and Walter Payton will do the rest for you. Good good offensive line blocking all day by Chicago's offensive group. And Walter Payton's had a good day running the ball. The Bears call a timeout with two seconds to go to the two minute warning. Well I don't really think that hurts you. You have to take it sometime. 
they feel they can get another play in before the two minute warning they're going to still have to they're going to get a timeout for the two minute warning when you take it is really irrelevant the fact is the clock was bearing down they might have been able to take it five or six seconds sooner if they were going to choose to do so but you can only you can only use it once and remember if you joined us they're going against a strong wind the wind has been a definite factor in this game two minutes two seconds to go 31 22 Seattle ahead Denver's playing the Jets today in Denver. That'll be a 4 o'clock Eastern start, 3 o'clock Central start. Mike Phipps down the middle of Scott. Scott wrapped up by Harris, the safety man, number 44. First down in Seattle territory now inside the 30. The two-minute warning, 1 minute, 53 seconds to go. We'll be back with a final 1 minute, 53 seconds of this game right after this message. From the Cape to the Gulf, they know how to cook up a good time. Beer makes it good. There's no debate. Beer makes it good. I'm telling you. 11 million times a day, America reaches for a Schlitz. Since 1849. From the folks who are number one in vans and wagons come the 1979s, like Dodge Maxi Wagon, the roomiest wagon you can buy. Like Sportsman Wagon, the wagon you can turn into a home away from home. Like Street Van, the van that's as fun as it is tough. Like some of the most maneuverable, versatile, best-selling vans in America. Is it any wonder when you ask about vans, you hear about Dodge? Dodge is into trucking, like America's into G. Hey, that's my Dodge. Kurt Gowdy, John Brody, Wendy, and now overcast Soldier Field. 153 remaining. The Bears have the ball on the Seattle 26-yard line. There's the score. Nine-point lead. Marrera kicked the field goal with five minutes to play. And that's looming up now as a biggie. First time this year that the Bears have gone over 21 points in a game. They may get more. Phipps completes the Robin Earl. Earl's in bounds when they wrapped him up, and the crowd roaring. They keep the clock moving. A minute 39, a minute 38. It's on the 24-yard line. Here we go. They're getting ready to. They're getting ready to go from the line of scrimmage again. As we see Earl being stopped for the one-yard gain. As Peyton breaks. Walter Peyton has a first down, and the Bears in a quick huddle. Rock moving a minute 15. It's on the 13-yard line of Seattle. First down, Chicago, trailing by nine. Out they go. Pips incomplete. Intended for Golden Richards, number 83. I think they're going to have to throw that ball to the inside because every time they go outside, one of those defenders is waiting to pick it off. We saw Cornell Webster pick one off a while ago. Autry Beeman almost picked that one off. And uh, Dave Brown already has one to his credit. Second down, 10, a minute, five remaining. O.J. Simpson, here's a report out of the game with the Atlanta ball club with a separated shoulder OJ Walter Payton has 102 yards on the ground fourth time this season he's rushed for 100 and he's on his way to repeating as the rushing champ of the National Football Conference last year the entire National Football League Phipps Quickie Harper down on the nine yard line once again the Bears trying to get a quick huddle NFL report coming up right after this game Third down, five. They have two timeouts remaining. Walter Payton at the five. And he is hit along the two or three yard line. The clock moving. Now it's stopped. 
Plenty of time, Kurt. Takes about two seconds to score a touchdown. That would give them still 38 left. Onside kick and give them a chance to get in field goal position. And I've seen a lot stranger things happen. The Bears have called a timeout. They have one left. They're on the two yard line with first and goal to go. They are moving that ball on the ground. They went 70, uh, 64 yards in the fourth quarter, going six, seven, eight yards a crack with Harper and Peyton. And now they're right back again, but that field goal by Herrera right now looks like it's going to be the difference. And Mike Phipps has had an outstanding second half. It's very difficult if you haven't played for nine games to come into a football game for the first time and really execute well. He's thrown a couple balls that he'd like to have back, but on the whole, he has done an outstanding job, and I'm sure he's earned a chance to have another go at it next week. He replaced Avellini in the second half. Avellini played the first half. Phipps. Formerly the Cleveland Browns came in here without being used in any one play this year. Seattle now have that big ball clip in there for the goal line defense. And what a goal line defense they put on against Denver in overtime last week. First and goal for the Bears. Forty seconds remaining. Harper, touchdown! Harper scores, and Roland Harper made a very big play because seconds are of the essence right now. He gained those two all on his own. That makes it 31-28. Being dropped for intimidating. Lantwine took the ball, threw it at the feet of a defensive linebacker. Trying to be cute, he may have cost himself a real good chance to win the ball game. Oh, he's getting the kick out of John Brody. He was a quarterback under the gun for over 15 years. Pulled a lot of them out in the last few seconds. And to him, 40 seconds or an eternity. It's a long time if you keep your time right. out and you get a hold of the ball. But they're going to have to probably take a 15-yard penalty when they kick it off. So even if they get an onside kick and they get the ball, I doubt they'll have enough time to get in field goal range. That yeah. 15 yards could be big. I love your positive thinking. There's the kick up. And the kick is good. That makes it 31-29. Now, the Bears have scored 23 points in the second half. But... Every time they've scored, the Seattle club has come back. And now, let's see what the Bears do on the kickoff. 35 seconds to go. They storm right back down the field again with that ground game. Walter Payton has had a sensational second half. He now has 111 yards, 24 in the first half. And they're being penalized 15 yards for unsportsmanlike conduct, and that's going to hurt them because instead of kicking off from the 35, they're booted from the 20, and they're booting it against the wind. They have no bargain if they get the ball on their own 30. It would take them three plays to get it down inside the inside field goal range against a strong wind because they have to get it inside the 20 to have any chance at all for a field goal. And it just kind of changes the whole flow of the game. All of a sudden, they have a chance. Now, I don't see that they do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine Seattle Seahawks spread out along the 30-yard line. There's Antoine, who... Uh, Peter that ball down in the end zone, spiked you, it. You can bet Neil Armstrong's talking to him about it. He didn't too funny if you're sitting in a, on a team that's lost six in a row. That's Armstrong, the head coach with a cap on. The Seahawks have their nimblest men in there with quick feet, good hands. They have receivers in there, wide receivers who can hold on to the ball and can move quickly. The onside kick. Good scramble for it. 
The Bears have it. Okay, they've got it. Now they've got to do something with it. John Skabinski recovered at number 30 for the Bears. They still have hope. 33 seconds remaining. They had recovered that onside kick of 10 yards that had been up around the midfield. And uh, one pass in a field goal range, they might have pulled it out. Okay. Look, they're sending the whole horde down there. They try to make come up with the ball before it goes 10 yards. They miss it. Fensick almost gets it. Winford Gaines, I think, ends up with the ball, and they've got it in pretty good shape. A lot of folks that started to the exits are coming back in again. 31-29, Seattle. Well, we've had some real games here in Soldier Field. Fifth flag is down. Handoff. I like a draw. The Peyton. Dennis Boyd stopped him. Flags withdrawn. Maybe an illegal procedure against the Bears. Looks like the left side of the offensive line got a little antsy. Seattle last week lost in overtime with a 12th man on the field. A legal procedure, they accept it. It goes back to the 26. Turner missed that field goal. Seattle had 12 men in the field, a short field goal attempt. Turner got another chance and made it. Denver won the game in overtime. First down and 15. 31 seconds to go. 31 to 29, Seattle. Deep pass. It is complete and out of bounds. The clock stop. James Scott caught the ball. Autry Beeman knocked him out of bounds. Very well thrown pattern by fifth. The offensive line's giving him plenty of time to do the job. He's got it out just short of midfield. What do you think 15 more yards on top of that would put him right now? A very costly penalty on that line. It'll be spotted on the Bears 48. Two-yard pass. There's the time. 25 seconds to go. 31 to 29. Seattle. Thomas is the field goal kicker. He's missed only one all year. The wind has died down a little bit too. Now Phipps will try and get one more. Get him in field goal range. Out to Scott. Incomplete. Beeman over there to cover Scott. But the ball has sailed out of bounds. Still got plenty of time. He can he can get off four or five more plays. <laughs> and he's still got a timeout. So all they have to do is get one down there about 30 yards. The art of positive thinking. Well, they've already scored 60 points, so it isn't, it's not like beyond reality. <laughs> 19 seconds remaining. The way a quarterback's got a thing. Second down, 10. As Mike Phipps brings them up. He got a good second half. Look at that, 171 yards. And he's thrown in, second half. in tough situations, and this is as tough as there is. Peyton has it. Peyton up the sideline, out of bounds. In the territory of Seattle. On the Seattle 46, Cornell Webb to drove him out. 12 seconds to go. He's got time for two plays. He's got to get the ball as hard as the wind is blowing down inside the 25-yard line for Thomas to have any chance to kick a field goal. I personally think it has to be inside the 20-yard line for him to really have a good chance at it. The wind, John, though, is not quite as strong. It's died down about 10 miles an hour. Might be five, eight mile an hour wind. First down, third down. Five. And that one is intercepted by Seattle. Cornell Webster, his second interception of the game. Running around with the ball. It dead yet. Look at the clock. He better get down. Three seconds. He's still running around. Now this is what you call a weird ending, pal. They finally get him. That's it, the game is over. Webster intercepted, ran all over the field, killed the last 10 seconds of the game. And Seattle wins it on Cornell Webster's last interception, the second in the second half. He was watching the clock, very smart, running around with the ball, and finally down in the watch it. I had the feeling he might end up in his own end zone, and we were going to end up with a tie ball game. 
With a two-point lead, he starts fiddling around back there. If I'm a coach, I'm not going to feel quite as certain. However, he did made a great play to get to intercept the ball. That's about the only place that Phipps could throw it. Cornell Webster came up with his second one, and as we watch, watch him look at the clock, John. He'll look up here in a minute, and you can see the. Now, <laughs> see, look at the clock. Okay. You better look out. He's going to get nailed. Around he goes. He goes all the way to the other side of the field, watching the clock. Watch to be sure he doesn't get in the end zone. There is the final, Seattle 31, Chicago 29.